Bonjour. Ah, bonjour, no. There's one. Yeah, yeah, très bien, très bien. There's one problem with RF. Go on. You can't see it. <laughs> yeah, but you've got glasses for that. <laughs> I have indeed. So I've got two bloody problems today. One, the signature 12.4. It's just gone able. I mean, I've repaired it. It fell down. I've repaired it and it kind of worked. And then kind of the next morning, it didn't work. You know, I'm thinking, what the hell is now going on? So you've repaired it and now it's no longer working. Is that what yeah, you're yeah, yeah, it doesn't exist now. Right. So in other words, the, the, yeah, yeah, it, it's like it, it physically exists on CCTV, but it, do, <laughs> but it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't exist on the VFO one. So, I mean, it, there's a break somewhere between A and B, yeah, right? Sounds, sounds like to me, mate, that you're getting yesterday's speed, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll get to the RFI. If you were making a video and you were describing what RFI on the audio sounded like, apart from playing a clip, I mean, it's a bit like a Dalek, sort of, isn't it? A fuzz pedal on your guitar. Fuzz pedal or talking through a kazoo, is it? Yeah, because it's good. Yeah, like it's, 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 it's a, very good. Yeah. Thing. Okay. You, you know when you think you've got a ton of problems and they all disappear at once? It's like, what the hell is going on? So I've got no RFI now. I can't even show you, tell you what it sounds like. I will try and find a clip of RFI. <laughs> My name is Raimo, Romeo Alpha India, Mike Porter, Raimo, Mike Hero, X-ray, X-ray, Tango. One, 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 two. one, two. Oh, this is that RF on the audio. But, oh, box is on. <laughs> ah, but, I have fault spotted on the Acom amplifier of very high power, I just ran some tests, an arc fault. So an arc fault would happen, um, I mean, forget the fact the Acom's all protected, but an arc fault is literally an arc is happening somewhere, okay? So what I've decided to do is, and, and, that, and that could be very often, that might be at the feed point, by the way, or somewhere at a high current point on an antenna. Now, I've been very lax with my maintenance, and I know for a fact that the con uh, exposed connector, the PL259SO239 connector, the bottom of the signature 12.4, which is, is a new one actually, but the connector is old. So if there's an arc fault, it's probably there, particularly on 40 meters, right? Because I've got no linear loading or anything going on. So what I've decided to do is just use what I've got. So I've got some uh, Service Soul Super 10. I've got a toothbrush, a rag. We'll just clean everything off and I'll recoat. That's what it'll be, won't it? Because it didn't have any extra Vaseline. I'm just going to waterproof it all with some Vaseline again. I was going to use silicon grease and I have specifically bought some. Unfortunately, it's sitting at home. So we'll do, we'll do some Vaseline. I also noticed when I undid the screw terminals in the cabinet, which can get a bit moisturized. Not, not like for a, like, not like a beautician would moisturize. It was really kind of salty, crispy, hard. I'll give them a quick coating as well. Make sure all of these are nice and slippy. So let's go and do that. So if you think about it, an arc, I've got a spider web on me. <laughs> But well, just like a spark plug, it's finding a short to ground or something rather than going up the spout and all the way up to the, um, the antenna. So by removing that ability for that spark to form, we should get all the shooting wiggly stuff going straight up the pipe. Actually, I don't think it was here because this is well waterproofed. But let's give it a clean look at. There might be too much Vaseline in it. Oh, it looks all right actually okay so this is berry flex um which uh, i'm not quite sure if it actually should be buried it's lying on top of the grass but it very quickly disappeared you can't actually it's pointless me showing you because it's within a couple of weeks the grass actually grows over the top of it but anyway let's just clean this out as best we can 
it looks pretty clean to be honest now I don't know what the active ingredient is in this stuff what if it tells us ah oh, it's made in Bridgewater was actually the, where the but some plastics company cellophane company British cellophane or something so the Bridgewater people are fairly comfortable with the idea of the place being smelly it just looks fine you know So I'm just going to put the Vaseline on the threads of the SO239, not like on the end, if you know what I mean. A lot of people who don't know what they're on about tell me not to do this, but I think that um, the beginning of that sentence says it all. I mean, obviously, if if this was a genuine five kilowatt system, well, I wouldn't even be using this, would I? Completely different connector. If you haven't seen this system before, what I do is I've got these grounding straps between the ground and the actual ground. Now they're not going to cause arc faults and they never have done in the, in the past. It's only, the, well that one's a bit loose. It's only since this thing fell down, which is forcing me to have a think about everything, tighten everything up. It's a good idea actually, thinking about it, tighten this up, could have been something as simple as that. Okay, that's fine, 40 metres, which one's that? Well, we'll just check all these as well. Alright. So, how this works, by the way, is that you've got two antenna ports, A and B, or out and out. That's, they're going to, they're going to the shack. So you could have one radio on there and one radio on there. For me, mostly, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's VFOA, that's VFOB, all right? So both these come to the next cabinet, and you can see VFOA is here, VFOB is here, and these go flying off. So A is where the A comment before is connected, so that's very, very thick coax called Ecoflex 15. And B is normally for listening on, all right? I can swap that over and take this, which goes to the shack, to the 590. You know, if we just want to have some fun, like on 80 meters on one radio, and I could be 40 meters, for instance, on that one there. But I've just checked, they're all nice and tight, there's no moisture in here, which is fine. But I did have one little problem, is that I reconnected the loop on the ground the other day, and I can't remember if it actually is the loop on the ground. So I need to follow this one, which goes, this could be quite funny, it might be a loop. <coughs> it is. So, <laughs> uh, so. Mm. B, I've connected everything the wrong way around. That's why it's handy to come out to the field and check what the hell you've done. So B's got to go to here, which means this is the loop on the ground. I've got it all back to front, the wrong way around. Doesn't feel long enough. Is it the loop on the ground? It might not be. A little tug. Yeah, it is. I can come up here, and I normally have that one. Third one. If 
from the bottom. That's why I couldn't hear anything on VFOB, look. <laughs> Just as well I'm sorting this out because I'm going on holiday and I fancy a bit of remote control. Right, so that, why have I got, why did I put a knot in this one? Was it to get rid of some of the excess? The trouble is the ham radio. If you install something temporary, it will become permanent. So it's best to do it right first time. I'm using old patch leads, all sorts of stuff here. One day, I might actually get round <laughs> to cutting all these leads to length. So I'll put that back out of this panel after making a pig's ear of it. A pig's ear in the UK is uh, when it's completely wankered. <sighs> Into cabinet two, or the original cabinet actually. Oh, come on, come up there. <sighs> That's VFOB or radio two, or radio number two. Because in the UK we've actually got a radio too from the BBC. Right, tight, tight, tight. Currently these are not in use. I will probably put VHF and UHF on that one, but not today. Right, let's go back inside. I've got to reconfigure all these cabinets anyway because. I've got a cabinet heater, putting this one here. We've got Wi-Fi to put in the field because I want one of those GPS controlled lawnmower things because it's getting a bit expensive to cut the lawn now. And uh, yeah, all right, let's go and do some testing. All right, so I think I've got to the bottom of all this now. Uh, what you can see is the screen of the uh, 990. In the middle here, we've got the signature 12. I have actually worked it all out, so let's not worry about it. Everything down this line is the receive port. Okay, so I could actually put the receive port there, whatever. Okay, so let's not worry about that. Let's go to the signature 12.4, and you can see without any audio. There we got some noise going on there. Well, I'll give it some noise on the other side as well, just so you can up and twiddle around here. I can't hear what you can hear, so hang on. So it's ju I'll just find a clear place and we'll blast some power. Oh, we want ACOM on as well. Let you see the ACOM running. Hang on. Oh, come on. We'll, we'll just leave that there, so, with any luck. One, one, two. Uh, hello, so frequency news. Um, zero XXT, just testing. Just testing, um, zero XXT. Now, I'm unlikely to run any more power than that. I'm thinking of the 3 dB loss on 10 meters, which would need at least 2,000 watts. M zero XXT. Oh, dismiss. That's telling me to clear the car out. <laughs> testing one two one two. So I'm happy. What about 20 meters? It's a frequency news testing. One two. Ah, one two. One two one two. M zero XXT. Just testing. No arc faults now. Let's go back to your fancy microphone. One, two, one, two. That's better than this. The Stella X2 sounds pretty nice, doesn't it, really? That was sent to me by the Stella people. And if I swatch this, swatch. <laughs> Switch to this microphone now. This is just the one on the little Pocket 2, the Osmo, you know? All right, because I'm about to go on holiday. Now, next job, which is really fascinating. The Icon 9700 does not have the ability to use Vox on voice 
via the USB port. It pisses me off actually. But I have discovered this. So this is the little, you know, adapter, Heil mic adapter. But then thinking about it, I might not even need this because what we could do is come out. I could squirt remotely. I could squirt my voice into the mixer. Come out of mixer via my golden Maxima. Rewire that because it's Kenwood. And then come straight in to the 9700. And then I could use Vox remotely coming in through the mixer. This is a transformer. And it's, it's fairly cool, actually. Andy Linton, he's got two of these for two radios. They're quite expensive. I'm sure a $5 one would do the trick, but these are good. Because what I'm paranoid about is getting RF on the audio again. All right, so there we are. Just a little bit of fun and games. I think the moral of this story is your ability just to think through a problem and wind it all the way back. I mean, for instance, ham radio. So let me give you, for instance, someone who will call me and say, my 12 meter, you know, on a DH commander, you've got a number of elements and they might say, I don't know, I'm just making this up. The lights are a bit loud, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Let me just turn them down a bit. I can't see 12 meters. So you think about what the problem is. You've got six elements, let's say, but you just can't see on the SWR meter where 12 is. Is it near 15? Is it up near 10? So you disconnect every element apart from 12 and just have a look, you know, things like that. So your ability, it makes the hobby more pleasurable if you've got an ability to stop and think, make a cup of coffee and think, how am I going to deal with this issue? What is a way all the way around this? I mean, some people say my DX command doesn't work. And after, you know, weeks of work, it turns out that the patch cable they were using, the, the, the jump lead, you know, what were between that and their analyzer was broken or the analyzer itself was broken or or the coax wasn't working right so you just you know some people just rely 100 percent on a piece of kit you go it's not working you know well have you plugged it into the radio uh, oh it works magically now the swr is fine so it was this bit or this bit with the patch cable or something your ability to think through problems sometimes is really really important right i'm going on holiday in fact you're probably watching this and i'm on holiday and uh, which should be a lot of fun and hopefully fingers crossed if we can remote into the icon i might do a bit of ssb vertically on two meters but we'll see about that if not you might hear me on hf all right so in the meantime uh, enjoy your fault finding enjoy your radio i'll see you next time bye for now